In 2012, Samuel Q. Truffelli decided to rob 90-year-old J. Leon. Q. Truffelli broke into Leon's home, and he tied Leon's hands before he started to rummage through his house. Leon managed to free his hands, and he convinced Q. Truffelli to let him use the bathroom. Leon grabbed one of the five handguns he had stashed in his bathroom, and he confronted the burglar. Q. Truffelli fired his gun, and he hit Leon in his jaw. Leon fired back, hitting Q. Truffelli four times. Q. Truffelli managed to wrestle the gun away from Leon, and he put the gun against Leon's head. Luckily, there were no bullets left. Q. Truffelli fled Leon's home. He was later arrested, and he was sentenced to 86 years to life. Q. Truffelli soon filed a lawsuit against Leon. He claimed that Leon had negligently shot him during the confrontation, and he said that Leon had caused him great bodily injury and financial damage. 7. Q. Truffelli's lawsuit was thrown out. Scott Kearns sexually molested a 10-year-old girl for several months in 2000. The child's relatives found out, and police began an investigation. Kearns confessed to the crime, and he was sentenced to 7.5 to 20 years in prison. In 2007, he filed a lawsuit against his victim. Kearns claimed that the girl had lied about the molestation as part as a conspiracy between her, her mother, the assistant district attorney, and the public defenders who represented him. The judge dismissed his case. Kearns filed another lawsuit in 2015, still claiming to be the victim of a conspiracy. The judge dismissed the case, as well. The following year, Kearns' victim filed suit against him for filling unjust and vexatious suits. Kearns received an additional prison sentence of 6 to 12 months for his repeated attempts to sue the young woman. The judge also imposed a ban on further suits by him. She said allowing Kearns to litigate his claims would allow him to re-victimize the victim. Scott Zielinski attempted to rob Nick's party stop in 2007. Zielinski held the employees at knife point and threatened to kill them. He managed to grab cigarettes, liquor, and $873 in cash. As Zielinski attempted to flee, however, one of employees fired a gun, hitting Zielinski twice. Three of the employees subdued Zielinski, and they beat him until police arrived. Zielinski was arrested, and he was sentenced to eight years for the robbery. He filed a lawsuit against the store seeking $125,000 for pain and suffering. Zielinski claimed that the store's employees had excessively beat him, he suffered a cracked sternum, collapsed lung, fractured ribs, and loss of movement. A judge allowed the case to go forward if Zielinski could post a $10,000 bond to cover the store and employees' attorneys' fees if he lost the case. Zielinski was unable to post the bond, and his lawsuit was dismissed. 1999, Brendan Fearon and Fred Barris broke into Tony Martin's home. The pair had heard that Martin had many valuable antiques. Martin heard the duo enter his home. He had been robbed several times, and he was determined to defend himself during this burglary. Martin started to walk down his stairs. Before he reached the bottom, a flashlight was shined into his eyes. Martin fired his unlicensed shotgun. He fatally shot Barris in the back and seriously wounded Fearon in the leg. Both Fearon and Martin were arrested. Fearon was sentenced to three years in prison for the burglary, and Martin was convicted of murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. Martin appealed, and his crime was reduced to manslaughter. His sentence was reduced to five years. Fearon filed a lawsuit against Martin. He wanted £15,000. Fearon claimed that his injuries had affected his ability to enjoy sex and martial arts, and he had suffered post-traumatic stress from the shooting. Martin filed a countersuit for damages. Fearon offered to halt his case if Martin dropped his, and they both dropped their lawsuits. In 2008, Simon Creamer became enraged when he found out that his employee, Mark Gilbert, had written out a company check to himself and cashed it. Creamer made Gilbert wear a cardboard sign that read, Thief. I stole £845 am on my way to the police station. 
11, he paraded Gilbert through the streets and indeed took him to the police station. The police let Gilbert off with a caution. However, Creamer was charged with false imprisonment and arrested. The charge would later be dropped. Gilbert filed a lawsuit against Creamer. He sued for two years' worth of lost earnings, distress, and the psychological help he said he needed after the incident. Creamer chose to settle the case, as it would have cost him £25,000 to go to court, which would have financially ruined him. He had to pay Gilbert £5,000 in compensation and £8,000 in court costs.